Praise the living Jesus. My name is Ariel Laure Lua, the prayer coordinator of this online prayer ministry, and this is Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network is an online prayer ministry where we fellowship together online to seek the face of the Almighty God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ with the help of Holy Spirit. Coming live from Lagos State, Nigeria, I know that as you join us today, as we fellowship together, as we pray together, to seek the face of the Almighty God, the Lord will arise and intervene on that matter. According to Luke 21, verse 13, we say, He shall turn to you for a testimony. That matter, that marital matter, that financial matter, that emotional matter, that matter concerning your business, concerning your career, concerning your health, concerning your loved one, He shall turn to you today for a testimony in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, ma. One more time. That that matter, this very day, the Lord will turn it to you for a testimony in the name of Jesus. So why not sit down, get ready for a defined encounter for a life transforming testimony. You are welcome, Jesus' name. The psalmist said, I slept and I wake, for the Lord sustained me. I slept, and I awake, for the Lord sustained me. We slept, and we awake this morning, for the Lord God sustained us. He sustained our family, He sustained our home, He sustained our marriage, He sustained our business, He sustained our career. I want you to lift up a hand and bless His holy name, lift up a hand and give Him all the praise, give Him all the honor, give Him all adoration. Let's worship his holy name. Let's adore him. Let's say thank you, Jesus, for another beautiful Sunday, another wonderful time in the presence of the Almighty God. I want you to lift up a hand and give him praise. Worship the King of Kings. Worship the Lord of Lords. Worship the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Worship your Lord. Worship your God. Worship the beginning and the end of everything. Worship him that has been there for you. Worship the Lord God that never forsake you. Worship the Lord God that did not allow the will and the agenda of the enemy to come to pass over your life. Why not lift up your hand and appreciate him for sustaining you, for the help, for the help. Why not lift up your hand and appreciate him for being there for you for being there for your family, for being there for your relative, why not lift up your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. To God be the glory. Great thing he has done in our life. Great thing the Lord is doing. In your life, in my life, in your home, in my home, lift up a hand and celebrate him. What a wonderful God we serve. What a wonderful God we serve. What a loving father, a caring father. A loving father, a caring father. A loving God, a caring God. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. I want you to open your mouth in your own dialect if you understand your mother's tongue. Say unto him in your mother's tongue, say, Father, thank you. Thank you for my life. Lord, thank you. Thank you for my home. Father, thank you. Thank you for my business. Thank you for my career. Thank you for my loved one. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your holy name. To God be the glory. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are worship. Our Lord, our God, I want to say thank you for another wonderful time. Thank you for our life. Thank you for our home. Thank you for our marriage. 
thank you for our business thank you for our career my lord my god I want to say thank you today thank you for everything that concerns each and every one of us to you be all the glory to you be all the honor to you be all adoration father as you come before you today i ask that the heaven open upon us in the name of jesus the heavens of mercy the heavens of favor the heavens of lifting the heavens of revelation the heavens of divine encounter lord let it open upon us today in the name of jesus arise O lord in your power arise O lord today in your might visit each and every one of us visit our home visit our marriage visit our business visit our career my lord my god i ask that today you visit everything that concerning us let your name be glorified in jesus name we are praying in jesus name we are praying praise ye the lord praise the living jesus once again every one of us who are online i welcome every one of us this morning if it's afternoon if it's evening in your hand good morning happy sunday you are welcome to today's sunday service my name is Ariola Lua, the prayer coordinator of this online prayer ministry. And um, by the grace of God, this is Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network. Praying Eagles Network. I'm the lead pastor, pastor in charge. I welcome every one of us. Amen. I always like to, because of the those who are joining us for the very first time. I always like to quickly, anytime we are online, to explain one or two things. This is Praying Eagles Network. We have all other um, ministry. We have other churches that bears Eagles, Eagle Network, Prayer, Pray, Pray, See the Lord. But our own is Praying Eagles Network. Praying eagles network and uh, the bible use eagle to represent christian the bible said those that wait upon the lord those that wait upon the lord they shall renew their strength like an eagle that's where we have our eagle from those that wait upon the lord those that wait we have our ego from that scripture those that wait because we are waiting upon the lord the bible said we shall renew our we use an ego to 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 represent us that's why we have the ego from and how do we wait you wait in the place of prayer you wait in the place of fasting you wait upon the lord god in prayer and in fasting pray and uh, because it is not one man's show it is not all about Orelua. It is not only about my family. It is not only about my immediate family, relative, or friend. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, God is adding to us day by day. God is bringing people from all over the nation to join us so that we can pray together, to network together in the place of prayer, to seek His face on daily basis. So we come together. Our coming together is the network. Who are those people that come together? The Christian that the Bible uses ego to represent. And what is the purpose of us coming together? We come together to pray. Praise the Lord. So if you are joining us for the very first time, I welcome every one of us. Amen. By the grace of God, we always have this is how we have our own church service. Church service. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some people believe that it could not be possible for us to have church online. If you can do business online, you can transact business online, there's nothing, just a few things that you cannot do online these days. Just a few things that you just have to have contact. That it is the most that you must have contact. Those are the only things that you can you can say oh, you cannot do online this is you want to talk to your doctor there are some doctors now online there are some uh, hospital that they run online services how do they run it 
you click on their website you book for appointment you pay them and uh, for the consultants amen you pay their consultants fees and they fix a date and a time and that date and that time you open your the, you go to the zoom they give you the link and a doctor will be there they will give you the name of the doctor that will attend to you and the doctor you and the doctor will talk oh this is the problem this is this this is this and the doctor stand up can i see this can you show me this can you show me this and you prescribe he asks you to go and run some clinical tests and you take that he uh, will send it to your mail you print it out you take it to the lab and the lab they will run the test for you and the result you scan it you scan the result you send it to that uh, doctors and after you send it you fix appointment again and the doctor will look at it and he will diagnose the problem and uh, um, the remedy this is the drug you need to go and uh, get and he will send the prescription through your email sign and data he will send it to you you print it out you take it to where you take it to the pharmacy again and if the pharmacy insists that because it's a printed one that are not going to attend to you what do you do the one that the doctor sent to you you show them when you show them they see amen what do they do they will sell it to you and you go and use it and uh, if you have another appointment again based on maybe ask you one week two weeks come back one week two weeks you send the remainder or they will send the remainder to you and you go on online again praise the lord we bless god for the technology of our days praise the lord so for us we will be doing this by the grace of god and we will be having testimony as you join us today every one of you online as you join us today there shall be avalanche of testimony in your life in the name of jesus avalanche of testimony in the name of jesus i once again i welcome every one of you are online and every one of you always visit our blog our prayer blog to pray there hear me sir hear me ma i don't need to be physically there you don't need to hear my voice the bible said god sent forth his word is what heal them as you are visiting there as you are receiving our prayer as you are receiving the audio as you are receiving the podcast as you pray them there shall be avalanche of testimony in your life in the name of jesus cry, cry unto me call unto me in the days of your trouble and i will hear you and i will deliver you it didn't say Orelua, call unto me through Orelua. it didn't say call unto me through a pastor it didn't say call unto me the purpose of a pastor apostle prophet deacon are to encourage us to guide us to encourage us to guide us but the main thing is call unto me you have to call unto god so the pastors your pastor your prophet your deacon your apostle amen they now come in in that area how pastor i don't know how to pray how should i call unto god i want to hear god how can i hear him so the pastor your pastor your apostles amen the lead pastor of your church will now guide you we now go and do it this way go and do it this way so every one of you are visiting our blog today now this is just the midday in nigeria you always have thousands of people there from nigeria from united states from south africa from united kingdom from canada barbados kenya Zambia, ghana jamaica zimbabwe cameroon india malaysia togo Sierra Leone, canada spain germany and the rest a lot of them is from different nations i welcome you thank you for coming thank you for believing in this ministry praying the good network and i pray for you sir i pray for you man every of your prayer requests every of your prayer requests the lord will answer you in the name of jesus i always receive testimony pastor i come across your is this a praying good network yes oh i come across a blog praying good network i was searching for prayer i saw a prayer there and i prayed and this is what god have done in my life i just want you to know wow it's glad in my heart thank you for being there thank you for visiting thank you for going there and those of you always encourage us by asking people to go there thank you for those of you who always send our prayer send our link encourage people to be part of this ministry thank you may god bless every one of you in the name of jesus last but not the least for every one of you who are partner who support this ministry i want to say a big thank you to every one of you i want to say a big thank you to every one of you 
to every one of you who are always supporting this ministry so that we can keep coming all the time i want to say a big thank you i want to say a big thank you the gospel is free the gospel is free but you and i know that just like engine we need to run it to run an internet ministry <laughs> one day a friend of mine said ah, uh, uh, you cannot compare online your online ministry with um, our church we spend this we spend this we spend this i just laughed so i said okay don't worry run it for one week let's see after two weeks he's asked me how are you managing how are you doing it <laughs> oh, oh. i said all right i'm not doing it again let me just hold on amen it's not by me it is you people who are online that god is using to support us so i want to say a big thank you last week this last week i have an emergency case so it was an hospital issue and it was so serious i have prayed for them what they demanded for is prayer but after i prayed for them i quickly uh, went there and i saw that they didn't have finance they didn't ask me for finance they only asked me to pray but the way they were sending it uh, so i prayed for them i went there and not getting there to pray for for the family and uh, the person involved i detect that uh, they lack fund so the hospital they can only do a little until <laughs> so i have to call one i've never met that person online i've never met that person one on one that person is just a member just a member i we have never uh, met we only talk so i just speak it from my phone i just hello ah is that pastor how are you fine please this is the issue on ground ah and person said okay i will send the small token <laughs> when the person sent the small token it was, it was not a small token by the time i forward it to that those uh, the family an elderly man the father called me the man did not know what to say he just burst into tears he said i don't know that uh, god can answer speedily this way god have used you to minister to that family so every one of whom god is using to support us i want to say a big thank you from the depth of my heart and my prayer for you in a time of need at every point that there will be a need in your life at every point that there will be urgent need in your life and the life of your children in the life of your wife in the life of your husband may god be available for you in the name of jesus may god be available for you in the name of jesus may god be available for you in the name of jesus before you call may thousands arise in the name of jesus do you hear that prayer before you call may thousands arise for you in the name of jesus before you call may thousands arise for you in the name of jesus once again i want to say a big thank you to every one of you may god bless you in the name of jesus welcome to pray Eagles network today is sunday and welcome to today's sunday service and i title today's message knowing god somebody say knowing god ah you are not saying it the way I want it. I want you to say it loud and clear. Say knowing God. Can you shout it one more time? Say knowing God. By the grace of God, today we are going to look at that topic, knowing God. And I know as we look at one or two scriptures, the Lord will open our eyes to what He really wants us to see in the name of Jesus. Praise ye the Lord. Once again, welcome to Pray in the Good Network. Knowing God. There's a great difference between knowing God and knowing about God. Did you hear me? There's a great difference between knowing God and knowing about God. There's a great difference. Many people, they don't know God. They know about Him. Am I talking? Somebody is lost. Okay, you are not lost. Amen. There's a great difference between knowing God and knowing about Him. Many people do not know God. They only know about Him. Knowing God is uh, you knowing everything about Him. What He like? There are some people when you when you ask them, 
Who is Olorua? Oh, that guy that is tall. That guy that is always, he will not pity you, you just put you on fasting and prayer. That guy, <laughs> praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Knowing God is you, having one on one rapport, one on one connection. You know Him. You know what He wants. You know what He doesn't like. You know what He likes. You know where He's staying. You know His language. You know His body language. The, the Psalm 32 verse 8. Psalm 32 verse 8. Psalm 25. Is it 25? Psalm 25 verse 4 verse 5. He said, I will lead you. I will teach you. Psalm 32 verse 8. He said, I will guide you with my eyes. I will not talk. I will be guiding you with my eyes. What is the meaning? I will be leading you with body language. Because some people may be there that I don't want them to know where you are going. So I will talk. I will just be giving you signal through my eyes. Just like our mothers in those days. The past message, when people are there, they just, when they blink, you know the meaning. When they shake their head, they, you know the meaning. When they shake their leg, you know the meaning. When they cough, if I should allow my mother to cough two times, I'm in, I am in trouble. Not all our, our children these days. You should blink your eyes. They ask you, mommy, why are you blinking your eyes? Something enter your eyes. <laughs> Praise it alone. There are some good dead information God may want to pass to you. So God will pass it through his eyes. I will lead you with my eyes. I will not talk. I will just be guiding you with my eyes. How can that happen? That can only happen when you know God. You know detail about him. You are able to hear him. You pray. You know what God wants for your life. Praise it alone. That is knowing God. God. That is knowing God. You are sure of Him. And all this thing can happen when you have one on one encounter with Him. I didn't say when you read your Bible. Did I say that? No. I didn't say when you, are, when you go to church. When you have one on one encounter with Him. One on one encounter. One on one encounter. One on one encounter. A woman some years ago, a woman called me and said, <laughs> She was trying to, because I'm from Muslim background, and somebody told her, gave her detail about uh, my family. And said, ah, Pastor, why will you leave and you not become a pastor? No, come. I've discussed with my husband. My husband has uh, met somebody, met this, met this. Uh, by the grace of, uh, uh, they said if you can, if you can come back, they are ready to sponsor you. They will do this. They will do this. They will do this. Juicy offer. I just laugh. I said, man, to the glory of God, I did not embrace Christ. I did not become Christian because of monetary value or because of what I'm what I'm going to gain. And she said, so what, what is it that you are, what is, what is, what is it? Name the price. Name what I give you. Name what I do for you. We will double it. <laughs> I just laughed. As, as a matter of fact, it's not about what they are going to give me. As, as a matter of fact, nobody, no woman being was involved. I said, it's all about define a counter. I have a counter with Jesus. So all the juicy offer did not move me. <laughs> it did not move me. Esther said, I will go approach the king. If I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. If I have a breakthrough, thank God. If I don't have a breakthrough, no, but, but I will approach. Daniel and the bread, I say, if you are ready to kill us, kill us. But for us to bow down to idol, that means for us to take eternity, for us to listen to you, we are not going to do it. This God we know, this God we know, is the only one that we follow, we will not take any other, or, or, or any other alternative. Why? They had a personal encounter. It was my encounter. It was my personal encounter. Personal encounter. 
There's nothing you can say about Christianity. There's nothing you can say about Bible that will move me, that will shift me, that will shake me. Why? Because I did not give my life to Christ because of what somebody promised me or what somebody said. I gave my life to Christ because of one-on-one -on -one encounter. It was difficult for people to stop Paul, Apostle Paul in the Bible. Why? Because this man had one-on-one -on -one encounter. He had a encounter one-on-one -on -one with Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus. So even when there was a prophecy that, you know, this place that you are going, they are going to ban you, they are going to imprison you. He just lied. He said, what kind of stupid uh, prophecy are you giving me? So you are giving me prophecy to scare me so that I will not go. And Paul said, let them ban me. Let them imprison me. This place I am going. Why? Why will he risk his life? Because of one or one encounter. He know God. Have you have one or one encounter with Jesus Christ? Do you know God? If I said, do you know God? Have you have one or one encounter with your maker? Have you have one? That is knowing God. 99.9% of people that go to church today, that profess to be Christian, the only thing they have is they know about God. You no, know I said there's nowhere between knowing God and knowing about God. They know about God. How do they know about God? They know about the God that people talk about. They know about the God that was written in the Bible. They know about the God that was preached from the church. They know the God of this, this the God of Sunday school. Because they are born in church. Their parents are teachers, their parents are Christian. They always took them to church. So they grow up from Sunday school. So they know the only thing they know about God is the God of Sunday school. The God that the teacher in their Sunday school in those days taught them. The God that they introduced to them. Hello, my Lord, sir. Did you know God? Or you know about God? Knowing about God is for you to know the God that they talk about, the God that they address, the God that they introduce to you. The God of Sunday school. <laughs> One of my junior brother will be online now. Last is it last week or two last week or two weeks ago? Praise the Lord. Either last week or two weeks ago, they are carrying their children and we were talking. We are talking through a video, and I saw something in the, on the neck of that uh, baby, and I said, "What is this? What is it?" They put the picture. The so-called picture of Jesus. I know why they put it. You know, we put it in the neck of our children for protection. <laughs> Number one, because we believe Sunday school Jesus. They show us a picture. The picture of somebody that acted a movie called Jesus. Somebody that acted as Jesus in a movie. The picture of that man. That was the person that they introduced to us as Jesus. And uh, we begin to carry it and we have it at the back of our mind. Anywhere we see that picture, we believe that that is Jesus. Hello, ma. Um, Mr. Patrick online, is that Jesus? That picture of Jesus that is circulating around, is that the picture of Jesus? Well, that was the, the Jesus that they introduced to us. And that is, was the image in our mind. And up to today, that is the image that we carry. Is that our Jesus? Is that your Jesus? Sunday school God. Sunday school Jesus. The devil of Sunday school have us looking wretched, ugly. But is that the picture of the real Satan? The Bible says Satan was awesome to the core. Was beauty, everything about glory was in him. So why do we have the horns? <laughs> the Sunday school Satan. And I, I just laughed. And I told the guy. I said, is that Jesus? He said, yes. He said, ah, pastor, we brought it from the church. Can you imagine? My own brother. I'm not saying outside that. My own brother. Can you imagine? My own brother. My own brother. Carrying the 
picture of Jesus on the uh, on the chain, and uh, that that is the image of Jesus. So that uh, wherever that uh, baby, say, ah, this is not a slap on me as a pastor, and your I'm a pastor, and I'm your brother. <laughs> hear me, sir. Hear me. Knowing God is a personal encounter. That guy is my brother. Me, I'm a pastor. Jesus is a personal encounter, one on one. So the Jesus I knew is different from the Jesus he knew. The Jesus me, the snowboard I knew, is the Jesus that died on the cross of Calvary. The Jesus that was that is up to now sitting at the right hand of God. The God I knew is the God that created the heavens and the earth that you cannot even explain. You cannot explain one ten of him. But now look at it. My own brother, the Jesus is new. Is that man that acted in a movie and we are carrying his picture and they taught us in Sunday school that this is Jesus. So anywhere we see that picture, we see Jesus. <laughs> hello, sir. Hello, man. Is that the God you know? So I ask you, did you know God that you know about all you know about God? Knowing about God vary from different locations to another. When you are in Nigeria, the God that you see in Nigeria will be different. When you move from Lagos State to another place, it will be another different. If you move from one church to another, it will, let's not deceive ourselves, it will be another thing. Because the God that the pastor will preach will be different if you go to another denomination, will be different. If you move from one geographical location to another, you will see different gods. Different gods. So what we differentiate, what we make you to stand is, the you know God? If you know God, if you come to my church, and I am preaching heresy, I am introducing God that did not exist to you, what will you do? You stand up, check your clothes, because you know that this guy did not know anything. But if you do not know God, that the only thing you know is the God that they introduced to you. Anywhere, you, if you got here, and they told you, ah, you have to take a uh, cola nut, take seven cola nut, take uh, five candle, tie them together, read Psalm 1, Psalm 2, Psalm 100, Psalm 1, and you shall go to me, the Lord is my shepherd. Say, read Psalm, I shake it off. Ah, you too, you will believe. You will believe. Because you don't know him, you only know about him. That means you know every anywhere, anything they talk about it, you accept. But when you know him, when you know him, when they tell you something that is not about him, you trash it. You trash it. You trash it. Get somewhere. When you go somewhere uh, and they are introducing to you, you want to make quick words, take a three candle, take a honey. Uh, read uh, Psalm 102. Psalm, uh, the Lord bless me. The Lord bless the work of my hand. The Lord lick it, rub your head. You too, you are happy. Because they they say you should read a scripture. They use that scripture to, to, to camouflage. But if you know God, you know that all those things, nothing there, they are zero. They are zero. Hello, Siloma. Why are you living a life of chameleon? You know chameleon, that uh, that uh, animal. If chameleon enter here now, within within five minutes, it can change to ten color. Chameleon have the, the ability to adapt to its environment, and the purpose is for protection. When chameleon is on a, a particular leaf, it will change to the color of that uh, leaf so that the pigment will change. So that if the enemy are coming, people will not see. That there's a chameleon there, they will only be seeing that color of that uh, uh, leaf. Hello, Siloma. Why are you why are you allowing your life to be like that of chameleon? Changing different color. Yellow today, purple tomorrow, green next tomorrow. Why did you allow your life not to be unstable? Why did you allow your life not to be unstable? Unstable something is something that is not status. You move here today. Tomorrow they say, you see how you move here. Next tomorrow they say, you have to be raising your leg. You'll be raising your leg. 
Next tomorrow, they say you have to be shaking your head. You are shaking your head. Unstable as water. Because you don't know God. Hear this. Unstable water are free water. Unstable water. They are free water. And free water are useless. Not really useless. Free, I put here. Free water have no value. Free water. Just like the ocean. Just like the sea. Just like the stream. They have no value. Nobody is going to put money on it. Go and take a cup of water. Take your cup to a stream. Bring out water there. And give somebody who is going to take it. For what? They tell you that water is dirty. You have no value. Because it's free. But take a bottle of water. A sealed one. Just small one. Give it to a visitor. What will they happen? They will value it. On stable water. The stream. The stream behind your house. The stream under that bridge. It's unstable. It's unstable. And it doesn't have value. It doesn't have shape. But the one that is contained, the one that has been contained, either to a bottle, or either to a gas, or either to ice, that have shape, that won't have value. Why will I pay for ice block? People are buying ice block. Why are people buy pay for it? Because that be contained because it will now have shape. Why are you allowing people? Why are you allowing doctrine to make your life unstable? Why is your life just like that of chameleon, unstable? If you don't know God, yeah, Mr. Hyama, if you don't know God, your life will be unstable. Your life will be static. Every doctrine will just be moving you to and fro. I asked her, I asked her, did you know God? Or you only know about God? Daniel 11, 32b. Daniel 11, 32b. But the people that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. The people that know their God, if you know your God, not the God that uh, they introduced to you, if you have one-on-one -on -one encounter, Daniel said, if you perish, we perish. If we die, we die. We are not going to bow down to this image. Because this image is not our God. We know the God that our, pro, our Father introduced to us. We already have one-on-one -on -one encounter with him. Before we are, in, say, we are into slavery. No, we are not going to bow down. The Bible said, the people that know, not Christian. So don't use Christian name, uh, I go to church. Uh -uh. The people, the people that know their God, that know their God. Not the people that know the God of their church. Many, 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 many places are just a cultic house that they just use a Christian name to to brand and we call it church. Many churches are just cinema houses. Many churches are just a, the place of fun. Let's just go and catch fun. Sunday, let's we will be working uh, Monday to Saturday. Let's go and catch fun. At least we make ourselves we make ourselves happy. And when we go to that church, the pastor will be telling you what will make you happy. Because if the pastor did not tell you what will make you happy, you will not come next week. And the congregation will begin to reduce. So the pastor wants more congregation. So we have to tell you what you want to hear. But the people that know their God, number one, they will be strong. Any opposition that comes their way, they will be strong. Any issue of life, they will be strong. Any storm that comes, they will be strong. Let the storm come. They will never, never bow down their head. They will never, never be removed. At any opposition, they will stand. The people that know their God. Not the people that know about Sunday school God. Not the people that know about the God that they introduced to them in church. Hello, my Lord, sir. Did you know God? How you know about him? You know about him because of what your pastor said. You know about him because of the picture of uh, Sunday school. Some people, hear me, sir, hear me, man. Some of you, you know, you have band. What do they call it? Wristband. You have wristband in your hand. That carry the image and uh, one of my sisters online now, he said, already you have started again, you know? You have started again. My sister, we just need to tell ourselves the truth once in a while. The wristband that carry the name and uh, the picture of the church, they will tell us when we put it in our hand. It's for protection. Satan will see you and flee. 
to yourself, ah, Abba. <laughs> um, uh, when attack is coming, because of that wristband of the church that bear the name of the church and the logo of the church, uh, the attack will see you are flee. They saw you lie and you bought it with your money. I, I am sorry for you. You believe in that and the day the accident will come. <laughs> some people, some of you now in your house, you have the calendar of your church, the calendar of your geo. I'm not saying it is wrong. I will clear that. Buy this uh, band, those uh, Christian, those, our churches, uh, something, our churches uh, t shirt Buy them, wearing them, putting them in our hand. It is good for two purposes. I have. Sometimes when you see me online, when I wear my my own branded uh, t-shirt, praying good center, it is good. It's just to announce, to show that I belong to praying good network. Me wearing it to show that I belong to praying good network, that I'm a member. That is all. But for church tomorrow, Mrs. Ledia, if I sell tomorrow. So that if I want to manipulate you tomorrow, you quickly tell me, play this video for me. The purpose of all those churches, waistband, edgia, this church's calendar. Some of you have your geos calendar, your church calendar you have. Because the geos say, any house where you put this calendar, no arm robber, no accident, no fire accident. Now lie you, they are just deceiving you. And you too, you bought it for protection, you put it in your house. Sometimes when there are problems, you go there, you, you touch your head on it. Is that not an idol? <laughs> Is that not an idol? Yeah, Miss Ayama. Is that no spiritual? You can't see anywhere like that in the Bible. You can't see anywhere like that in the Bible. The purpose why I will use the word we. I'm not selling. I'm not selling. Why Christian? Why churches? Why they sell things like all those uh Waistband, wristband, sorry, wristband. They have the church image, the edge. It's just to make money for the church. The churches they needed money to run their program, so they needed to look for ways to make money. The pastor, can you imagine? I'm a pastor now, full time. I have wife, I have children. I'm going to pay for school fees. I'm going to pay for house rent. I'm going to buy food. Uh, one of my uh, son, uh, he has been on my neck. My shoe, my shoe, my shoe. There's nothing really wrong with this shoe. I don't want it. I, so I needed to look for money, a way out to get money and buy an issue. I must not steal. So what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So that is the purpose of pastors selling wristband, making wristband, selling calendar, and things like that to raise fund not for the church but for the pastor you hear me again all those those of you that you have uh, wristband in your hand the purpose is to raise money for the pastor so that the pastor will have something to take care of his house so that wristband will not uh, do anything no. but you believe because if they don't tell you that uh, you put it in your hand that won't be accident, accident. That won't be this. You will not buy. And if you do not buy, I will pass on it. <laughs> One of my sisters is already. Right, you are looking for trouble again. Yeah, we just need to tell ourselves the truth. You will buy. You put it in your hand. You put it in your children's hand. Why? Because you don't know God. You only know about God. And they told you the only way God, God can protect you is for you to put one shams in your hand. Is that not sham? When you put something in your hand, is that not sham? But that's nothing. The pastor just wants to make money. Just like before, I used to all my uh, book. You see me, I put them all my writer. I put them in book, put them on Amazon. I be selling them. But, amen. Say no. Do the teaching. Do the teaching. Do the teaching. Do the teaching. I will feed you. Don't look for money there. <laughs> and since that time, I stop. Put it there. Um, I want to say, uh, uh, let me do the teaching. Hello, my Lord, sir. Why am I saying this? If you know God, nobody will come and give you a false prophecy, false revelation in order to entice you, in order to cage you. 
as he's saying it, you know that he's telling lie. Because I know my God, one prophet, one year like this. Hey, mm, hallelujah, I saw a revelation. Your father's house was a dilapidated house. Because I was passing through some things at that time. And I did not declare my identity in that church. Nobody knew my identity. I look at him. My father said, say yes. I said, sir, in the spirit realm, on the physical, he said, I look at you. In your father's house, is not a dilapidated house. How will you look like this? I just laugh. <laughs> I just laugh. In the 80s, in my town, one of the best house, before you can't turn best house, turn, number one, number two, number three, you mentioned my father's house in the 80s, up to the 90s. You know now we have modern houses. <laughs> I just laugh. Because I'll be giving promise to people and everybody will be shaking. He said, you better come. Come and work for me so that uh, I will help you. All those. I said, so that by the time God used me to raise you up, that your father's dilapidated house, God will bless you. You'll be the one to go there and pull it down. You pull it down. When you pull it down, and you go, we help you to build it. Which house? The man have more than five houses. My father have more than five houses in different. So which of those houses that I'm going to put down? <laughs> oh, as he was saying it, I was just laughing. I said, "Sir, that's easy. If you have said in the spirit, I would say maybe in the spirit realm, maybe in represent. But what you are just saying is wrong." Girl. Is, because you are looking at me, it's wrong. <laughs> I know my God. I know my God. I know my God. If you don't know your God, whatever they give you, you will accept as God. The day I catch that boy, I'm still going to beat him. That my brother. I've told him I'm going to beat him. It happened just last week. He's online right now. You'll just be laughing. I told the wife that you see the husband, I will beat your husband. Because if I'm a pastor, and your husband uh, 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 brother, and you people cannot through me <laughs> see God. That's why I said knowing God is personal. Knowing God. My father is a pastor, I have nothing to do with you. My mother is a prophetess, I have nothing to do with you. You must know God yourself. You must have a contact with God yourself. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. The same Jacob, the God of Abraham, Abraham had a counter with God. The God of Isaac. Isaac had a counter with God. But Jacob did not have a counter with God. Jacob only knew the God of his father. And he was running from pillar to post. He ran and ran and ran around to an, an Abalis house. A Kotik man. His mother's brother. His uncle. Uncle Laban. Uncle Laban was a priest. The priest, one of the priests of Midian. Was a priest or cultic, uh, he was running here and there until the day he had a counter with God. Even he had a dream about God, yet that was not yet enough. Until he had one or one encounter with God. The day he had a counter with God, he stopped running. He stopped running. The day I had a counter with God, that was the day I stopped running. Me, or no, I won't go to church. I've said it. I don't enter church. Enter church. I don't enter church. But the day I had a counter with God, I enter church, I cry my life out unto God. I am ready. I am ready. Hello, my Losa. Mrs. Lady, did you know God? Or the God you know is the God that um, <laughs> the God of your pastor, the God that your father served, the God of your mother. Moses was trained they told Moses about God. Yet, Moses did not know God until Moses was 80 years old. Moses knew God at the burning bush. When the bush was burning and the bush was not consumed. That was when God, Moses now had one on one encounter with God. Did you know God? The God you only know about. The God. I will repeat it hundred that time. If the only thing you know is the God in the, that they wrote in the Bible or the God that the, your Sunday school introduced, just like that, my, like that, my brother, that the, the picture of uh, the actor that acted as Jesus, they put it on his uh, pendant and was carrying it. I carried the picture of Jesus. Many of you now, you, you do the same thing. 
as your enemy. Many of you, you carry the pendant that carry the image of Jesus Christ for protection. Stop deceiving yourself. Nobody have the picture of Jesus. Daniel and his brother, they knew God. When they faced opposition, they were strong. No wonder. The Bible said, those that knew their God, those that know their God, they will do what? They will be strong. When the opposition come, what will make you different from others is if you know God, you will stand. You will stand. And the Bible said, they will do great exploit. Anything you lay your hand upon, crisis will come, problem will come, but you will stand. Anything you start, you will stand and finish it. You will do well in life. You will do well in marriage. You will do well in business. You do well. I will stop this online praying the good network. If somebody prophesy it, if somebody just told me from day one, I will, ah, when people are telling me, all right, where do you see? Tell me one pastor. Tell me somebody that is running full time online. You are just wasting your time. But because I know the God that says you go and do it, because I had a counter with Him. On many occasions, on many occasions, on many occasions, I've shared I was working in one bodily company and they have to, we have to shut down the whole system because they want to do some renovation. So I was just, just saying, let me just, just say, I want to speak to you. So I entered into one place where nobody would know that somebody was there. The place was dark. So I entered there because I, I don't want to be disturbed. And from, from nowhere, a bright halogen light flooded the place. There was no light. But from nowhere, I just saw a bright light that I cannot look. So I have to close my eyes. The, 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 the sensation, the brightness of the fire was burning my skin. And I feel like crying. And I saw somebody inside that light. And I just tried to ask, Lord, help me, who is this? And he said, I'm Jesus. I just want to reveal myself to you. I am Jesus. And every I just shake. And it just the dust disappear and the light disappear. And I was shaking. I was having cold. I was shivering. And I came out. And everybody was looking at me like a ghost. My supervisor, I won't forget him. My supervisor just just turned time to the factory. Just look at me. He looked at me, look at me, say, right, follow me. He took me to the survey. He said, What happened? I was shivering. He said, BJ, you not believe. And he, he said, some minute ago, in the other office, I sensed the presence of God because I was born again. He said, I sensed the presence of God. I know something is going on. God, the presence of God is in the Sydney factory. So what happened? And I told him, he said, yes, you have seen right. I can't tell anybody who will believe me. For like one hour, I was shivering. I saw him. I had a counter with him. So not anybody can tell me about Jesus. Nothing. If he asked, if he come today and said, stop, I will stop immediately. When he asked, I should be uh, broadcasting prayer. I was broadcasting it. I held loose that I must stop. But the one that I encountered said I should be doing it. I was doing it today. They left me. Oh. <laughs> they left me. Mrs. Ledia, did you know God? Did you know God? Or the only thing you know is the God that they introduced to you. I'm going to close with Psalm 103. Verse 1 to 7. Why you must know God? Benefit of knowing God in the next five minutes. I believe somebody is blessed today. Jacob was running from pillar to post because he did not know God. His father was a prophet. His grandfather was a prophet. Yet he did not know God. If you don't know God, you'll be running from pillar to post. Little things like this will be shaking you. Psalm what? I can't hear you. Psalm 103, 1 to 7. Psalm 103, 1 to 7. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 2. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefit. Forget not all his benefit. Who forgiveth all your iniquities? Who heal all your diseases? Who redeem thy life from destruction? Who crown you with loving kindness and tender mercy? Verse 5. Who satisfy my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles? Verse 6. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. 
chapter 7. He made known his ways unto Moses and his heart to the children of Israel. If you know God, if you have one on one encounter with God, hear me, sir, hear me, ma. These are some of the things that you are going to enjoy. If you know God, if you have one on one encounter with God, these are some of the benefits that you are going to enjoy. Number one, verse two, he said, Praise the Lord, oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. What are these benefits? Number one, somebody say number one. Mrs. Ledia say number one. Mr. Patrick say number one. Every one of you online say number one. My wife say number one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Fastly, who forgiveth all your iniquities? No matter your sin. No matter what. No matter your sin. Who forgiveth all your sin? If you know God, you will know that God has forgiven you all your sin. That's the number one benefit. Number two. Who heal all your diseases? Not just disease, diseases. What is that earth issue? What is that affliction? If you know God, you will know that God can heal. You know that God will bring you healing. And he will bring you healing. Every one of you are with one ailment or the other. I pray for you today. May God bring you divine healing in the name of Jesus. Fast forward. Who redeem your life from destruction? If you know God, if you know God, you will be sure that God will redeem your life from any form of affliction, any form of health issue, any form of crisis, any form of accident. Not only your life, the life of your loved one, the life of your husband, the life of your children, the life of your family members. You will be sure that he will redeem your life. You will be sure. When I'm talking sometimes, sorry. People think that uh, this guy. No, I know my God. So that is what gave me assurance. Says uh, 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 there's somebody you cannot look. I, I will, I will kill you your size. Can you kill me? You cannot even kill me. Then you are not my God. If you know your God, you will be sure that in everything, God will be there to redeem your life from affliction. Number four. Who crowned thee with loving kindness? Is that not blessing? Is that not blessing? Loving kindness. If you know your God, you know that your God is there for you. He will be there for you at all times to bless you. So why will you not be looking for a shortcut? Why will you not be going and saying, take uh, the head of a uh, cockroach, take the, the intestine of a uh, rabbit, and uh, take uh, one calabash, burn everything together, and read when they want to rob you, they will pick a scripture. You now read Psalm 1, Psalm 3, Psalm 5. The Lord bless me. The Lord did this. The Lord did that. And you yourself, you are doing it. You don't know God. If you know God, you know that after the word, no other thing. Verse 5. It satisfies our mouth with loving kindness. When you know your God, you know that God will be always there. Okay. We are seeing fast forward. You know that God will always crown your labor. Those of you who are working, you'll be sure that one day, as you are working, as you are working, you'll be sure that God is coming to bless you, to crown your labor. Some people say, ah, uh, this guy or Elua is just working with seal. Let me tell you, I'm not working with seal. I'm not work- the truth is, I'm not working with seal. He asked me to do it. And I want to do it with all my strength with all my energy, with all my labor, so that one day, it will show up to crown me with the blessing. Well done, good servants. Well done, faithful servants. You have done it very well. Not that you have done all, but you have done it very well. So that it will crown me. Then the next, that tell that mercy. You know that God is God of mercy. When you know God, you know that God will be there to show you mercy. You know that God will be there to favor you. When God shows you mercy, He favor you. Mercy and favor work together. You are going for that proposal unless you don't know God. When you know God, you know that God will show you mercy. And when God shows you mercy, you know that favor is yours. Fasis, we satisfy our mouth with good things. That is the sixth thing. We satisfy our mouth with good things. Your life will no longer lack good things from today in the name of Jesus. Number seven, the seventh thing that God will do for you if you know God, He will renew your strength like that of ego. 
waist pain today, joint pain tomorrow, head pain tomorrow, neck pain. As somebody that is standing before me, neck pain tomorrow, uh, leg pain, uh, cockroach pain. No, God will renew your strength. And as God renew your strength, all those pain, all those pain will not be there. Mrs. Ledea, did you hear me? All those pain will not be there when God renew your strength. And that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Fast six. The Lord has executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. When you know your God, you will know that God will be there to fight for you. God will be there to fight for you. God will be there to fight for you. And every one of you that you have been oppressed, I pray for you today. May God arise and fight for you in the name of Jesus. Every one of you that you have been oppressed, may God arise and fight for you in the name of Jesus. Let God arise and fight for you. Let him 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 fight for you. In the name of Jesus. Your home, your marriage, your business, your career. I decree, I declare. Let the Lord God arise and fight for you in the name of Jesus. Let God arise. Let him fight for you. 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 For seven. He made known his ways. When you know God, God will reveal his way. God will reveal everything he wants for you. Praise the Lord. When you know God, his way, he will always reveal it for you. He will not allow you to walk in darkness. He will always reveal what he has in mind for you. And last but not the least, is act unto the children of Israel. What is that act? That act represents wonders of God. That art represents science and wonder. It represents miracle. So yeah, Mr. Herman, when you know God, when you know God, what will happen? Talk to me. When you know God, what will happen? God will always work miracle in your life. God will always work. There will be always be science and wonder in your life. I close this morning with the same question I'll be asking each and every one of us, including you, my wife including every one of you in the house, including every one of you online. Hello, Sailoma. Did you know God or you know about God? Have you had one or one encounter with God? Or the only thing you know is what they are saying about him. Even if they are telling lies, you don't even know. I pray for you today. May God reveal himself in your life in the name of Jesus. May God reveal himself in your life in the name of Jesus. May God reveal himself in your life in the name of Jesus. Before we close, we are just going to pray one prayer. Oh Lord my God, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. And if you know God, you pray. I want to know more of you. Can you lift up your hands? Oh Lord my God, reveal yourself in my life. Reveal yourself to me. As you reveal yourself to Moses, as you reveal yourself to Samuel, as you, as you reveal yourself as the fourth man in the burning fire to Daniel, Lord, reveal yourself, O oh Lord. I want to know more of you. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord. I want to know more of you. Reveal yourself to me in my marriage, in my business, in my career. I want to know more of you. Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself in my business, in my career. Lord, reveal yourself. I want to know more of you. Lord, reveal yourself. My Lord, my God, reveal yourself. I want to know more of you. I want to know more of you in my business, in my career. I want to know more of you in my marriage. Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Please, sir, please, man, can you pray that prayer for yourself? As you are closing this morning, as you are preparing to go into another week, as the Lord God to reveal himself in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your career, concerning your children, concerning your finance, concerning your health, let God reveal himself. 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 So Lord may God reveal yourself. Reveal yourself in my life. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself in my life. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself in my life. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself in my life. 
Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself in my life. Reveal yourself to me. Can you pray that prayer? Let God reveal himself. Let God reveal himself. Let God reveal himself. Let God reveal his glory. Let God reveal his power in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your career, in everything that concerns you. So, Lord, my God, reveal yourself. I want to know more of you. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord. I want to know more of you in my marriage, in my business, in my career. Father, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. I want to know you. I want to know more of you. Lord, reveal yourself. In my heart, if you are having a issue, the Bible says it's the great healer. Why not has the Lord God to reveal himself as the great healer? If there is lack in your life, the God, the Bible says God is the God who owns the thousands of cattle upon the thousand seas. Why not has the Lord God to appear? Why not has the Lord God to show himself mighty and powerful concerning that need in your life? What about your children? Lord, reveal yourself, O oh Lord. I want to know more of you. Lord, reveal yourself. I want to know more of you. Lord, reveal yourself. I want to know more of you. In my marriage, in my business, in my career, I want to know you this week. As I prepare to go into this new week, reveal yourself, O oh Lord. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord. I want to know more of you. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord. I want to know more of you. Reveal yourself, O oh Lord. I want to know more of you. Please, uh, please, uh, pray that prayer from the depth of your heart. Let God reveal himself in your life. On that matter, on that issue, let God reveal himself. 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 Lord, concerning this ministry, Penny Goose Network, I want to know more of you. I want to see more of you. I want to know more of you. I want to see more of you. Lord, reveal yourself. 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 Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you pray, my sister? We are closing now. Pray that prayer. That should go into this week. Let God reveal himself in your life. On that matter, that issue, let God reveal himself so that you'll be able to know God more. So that you'll be able to know more of him. So that you'll be able to know more of him. So that you'll be able to know more of him. Let God reveal me himself. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name, we are pray. As you go into this week, I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, man. May God reveal himself to you in the name of Jesus. The Lord has revealed himself to Saul on his way to Damascus. Let God show up in your life and reveal himself in the name of Jesus. The God that revealed himself as the fourth man in the fire on that issue, that bony issue, that serious issue, that pending issue. Let God reveal himself in the name of Jesus. The Lord that revealed himself unto Moses. I pray for you, sir. I pray for you, man. Let God reveal himself to your husband in the name of Jesus. Let God to your husband this week. Let God let your husband have a defined encounter of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' name we are pray. Praise ye the Lord. As you go into this week, the Lord will reveal himself. Before next week, Sunday, you will come back with testimony. Jesus' name we are pray. Did you know God? Go forth and have a counter with him. Jesus' name. Dear father, mother, uncle, auntie, married, single, boy, girl, man, woman, brother, sister, and friend, you and I will one day leave this world and our spirit will appear on the other side. Will you be allowed to enter heaven? The only way to enter heaven is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and walk in righteousness. If you have not given your life to Jesus or you once did and you backslid it, you started living in sin, please say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that you died for me and on the third day you rose again that I might be free from sin. Right now, I confess you as my Lord and personal Savior. 
Forgive me my sins and wash me with your blood. Make me your child and write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Sin and Satan has no more power over my life. In Jesus' mighty name, it's a new day. Amen and amen. God bless you.